Yeah, hello everybody and welcome once again. What a great opportunity to speak to former captain, now recently appointed full-time director of cricket, Graham Smith. Smithy, how are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, Tom. Uh, I think everyone's adjusting to a, a, a new style of living and a, and a new world. But, uh, you know, with five kids attempting to work and teach at the same time, it's, 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 it's interesting times. But, uh, you know, uh, grateful uh, for a lot of things, I guess. Mm. Congratulations on, on the appointment. Uh, as I all sort of been on Zooms and... <laughs> Teams and Webexes and everything else on, on the internet that everything's gone on. How's that been? Yeah, I mean, I was saying to someone, uh, I think it was yesterday, that I, I spend more time in meetings now than I think I, I ever had. You know? Um, you know, Microsoft Teams has been uh, burning out on my, on my phone. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, it's also, I guess, allowed us a little bit of time to, to really focus. We, you know, Cricket South Africa, there's, there's an extensive amount of things that needed to to be focused on and, and rebuilt. And also I've, I've learned an extensive amount about the corporate world at financial year end. So that's, that's been interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know, in the, in the three or four months that I was involved, it's been a lot of learning, um, uh, you know, in terms of what's in place, uh, you know, areas and strategy going forward. And also just mucking in, you know, I think uh, even though cricket is such an extensive part of the business, you know, there were so many areas that needed to be rebuilt that you kind of just muck in and get involved in, in everything you can to try and help you. Uh, what's been the most difficult? So in the two, three, nearly four months that, that you have been in the job as interim director of cricket, what did you find the most difficult? And what did you find um, the most easy, I, I should say as well? Um, well, no, not, not easy. I don't think I found anything easy. I mean, I think, you know, you, there are moments you're scrambling a little bit, you know, you, I, I think you get the job sort of end of December, England arrive, you put sort of a leadership group in place. And then, you know, there's that part of you that's, that's hoping that, that that will show quick signs of success. But I think deep down, you know, that it's going to take time. Having, having watched the protests, having watched some domestic crickets, having seen us over a period of time, you, you know that you know, you might have the odd bit of success, but how do you create that consistency? So I think on the men's side, it was a lot of learning. It was about exposing players, uh, trying to identify a group of people that we could move forward with. We, we took some risks as well. We, we didn't stick to sort of the tried and tested and, and back them, you know, especially in the, the shorter formats. We, we gave a lot of opportunities for people to, to come through, to expose a lot of people to, I guess, the pressures and the standards of, of international cricket. Um, and I think we've uh, got a group of players now that we believe that we can put time and effort into. Pom, I think what initially surprised us on the men's side was how much coaching and mental planning and thinking we had to get into with, with the guys. You know, I, I think that, that that gap was kind of further away than, than we had initially thought. Um, so we, we, we had set up you know, a group of players, an extensive winter program that we were going to work on. And obviously, Corona has, has, has forced a re-strategy on, on some of those things. Um, I think our women's team, you know, uh, I think players across the board, let me just go into the next phase. I think building, rebuilding relationships within Cricket South Africa was a key thing, you know, from sponsorships, stakeholders, broadcast, soccer, both men and women players. I mean, it, it seemed to be a lot that had just... You know, you know, hit the wall, uh, and we needed to rebuild a lot, and that took time as well. Then there was the commercial element, trying to, you know, bring back some of the broadcast partners. You know, as you say, repair some of the sponsorship the things that had, you know, hit the wall uh, towards the, you know, December time, end of November. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I flew to Perth, spent some some time with the ladies uh, before the World Cup. Got to to listen to them. And then you kind of get in and, and now you've got to, you know, sit with the people within the office. I think the one positive that I, I really appreciated in the first three or four months was, was the office. You know, there's a lot of good people there that care a lot. Um, you know, with a bit of leadership, you feel like you can, you can get somewhere with, with a lot of the people in the office. So I think um, that, that, that for me was, 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 was a big positive uh, in the first couple of months. Were you able to delve sort of 
further down, you speak of, yes, the office, which is administration, and, and it's particularly important, and it's kind of where things run from. Then the men's and women's national teams. What about further down and, and relationships, I suppose, all the way through with regard to um, what I'll call the boards of the various um, franchises slash uh, cricket associations around the country in the provinces? Um, I've, I've, I've attended some chief executive conferences. I think we've opened up the channels of communication there. There's been extensive now, even through COVID, I think every 10 days, all the chief execs, uh, we, we meet and, and uh, sorry, there goes my phone. We, 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 debate, <laughs> no uh, we debate ways forward. And, and, and I think the key over the last few months is to open up that chain of communication, to share information, to provide direction uh, as much as anything. I think a lot of that has halted from, you know, I think people were working in silos all over the place. Um, we've uh, obviously rebuilt the relationship with Saka. So, you know, that from a player body perspective and the players, you know, there's real alignment again, which is, which is key. Um, you know, there's a lot, of, lot more that needs to be done. You know, uh, as I say, as you say, I mean, we were talking this morning about how extensive cricket services really is. You know, you you dive, you dive into, you know, uh, growing the game, exposing people to the game. You know, bringing players through the pipelines. Then you've got under 19s. You've got high performance. You've got national academies. And you know that takes time to strategize and, and to, to come up with a, with a good way forward. You know, and, and also there's huge financial pressure uh, that maybe wasn't there um, six to eight months ago. You know, uh, yeah, my phone's about to go. I think you vibrated. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> um, so, so, so I think we've got to relook really at everything. You know, based on, on on the financial stresses as well. You know. Uh, when I got into the job, I, I, I really was shocked at how much money was being spent at uh, grassroots level, you know, on the RPCs, the hubs, the national academies, the academies, semi-professional. I mean, it's an extensive amount of money that cricket side has been piling in there, which we don't have anymore. So, you know, we, I think we've got to, you know, look to align with government a little bit more on facilities uh, and also spend our money wisely in terms of how we touch people, but also bring them through. Mm, okay. Yeah, the job, of course, is extensive. and. Um It'd be fair, I think, to, to say that you wouldn't have an idea of the scope of the job prior to getting into the job. A shift on to, to what you, you said about an extensive winter program and planning. And you can go into the various phases. What is it with an uncertain landscape that you have been able to plan for post-COVID-19? Yeah, uh, Pom, look, I mean, initially we had set up uh, training camps for everyone that wasn't going to be at the IPL. Um, so, you know, exposing players, you know, really digging into the coaching and the thinking, uh, developing the skills further, uh, uh, you know, wanting to really identify the right people to expose the team to, to try to grow uh, all aspects of their game. Um, so, you know, we had told the players that, uh, you know, winter's not going to be a holiday in the next three months. We, we're going to do some work. And then obviously Corona and COVID, you know, it, it, it arrives. So I think consistently we need to have a plan and then re-strategize and we looked at plan based on, you know, what's happening around us. So, you know, we identified 47 players on the men's side. We, we identified a women uh, program as well uh, on the high performance side for, for the winter. We identified a national academy number, um, and that has now um, become a, a fitness program at, at this stage. Um, you know, with the tours being cancelled uh, or postponed of late, you know, we we, we now uh, managing that on a week to week individual programs. Uh, I think fitness and medical is an area that we really want to focus on. We feel that that's an area that's been let slip, um, so we want to improve that. So, uh, so far in two weeks in, the, the, the guys have been doing the work and the data seems okay, even though they, they have limited access to, to, to things. Um, so, I've been, I've been happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, as you say, every week we've got to you know, see what uh, our president has to say and, and, and where we sit in terms of how we can move forward. Mm. In terms of contracts, uh, national contracts, you're talking about identifying players, as you say, academy and, and everything else. Is, there's a slight complication, and as there always is, a guess. And here I want to talk about availability or lack of availability of players 
with the likes, uh, with, with people signing Colpac contracts and yeah, others not Colpac contracts, they impede off to the United States. Um, so loss of players <clears throat> and something we spoke about before when you took the job on as the interim, that you might try to get back some Colpac players. Where are you on that front in terms of ensuring that you have this base of players, number one, who are um, experienced and can lend a hand to your national teams? Uh, Tom, I mean, maybe let's start with the process. I mean, Cricket South Africa, as part of the MOU, gets to contract 17 players every year. Um, we've now contracted 16. We, we weren't sure who the 17th player is. There were some good performances, but on a consistent basis, we weren't sure. We wanted to leave that for a, a performance uh, contract, which is obviously, <laughs> there's, no, there's no cricket at the moment, so <laughs> uh, it's going to be difficult. But um, then the franchises get to contract 15 to 18 players themselves. Um, so that all needs to happen. I mean, that happened in a, in a bit of a mad rush, considering you know the board had to approve the Saka relationship, and then we got we got it done. Um, it's unfortunate. I mean, I think the one incident that we had now was was the Dane Pitt straight and straight away post the. I mean, not Dane Pitt. Sorry, uh, Dane Patterson post the England series. He, he got a taste of some Test cricket, um, and 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 you know suddenly got wind that he was signing a coal pack. <clears throat> So I got involved with uh, Nabil Dean, CEO of the Ashville Prince of the Cobras. Uh, I spoke to the ECB, and, and we got a, you know, we got an extensive ruling from the ECB on the position of Brexit. You know, and the coal pack was coming to an end. Um, you know, I engaged with the selectors, and the selectors felt that he wasn't going to be in the contract 16, 17. Um, and, and you know, that's the information that was passed on. We, I try, we tried our best. You know, I never had any direct communication. With with Dane, he never picked up the phone. And as far as I knew in January, the, the information I'd been given from Asheville and, uh, and um, Nabil Dean Nabil. was that he, 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 had, he, had, he had changed his mind and he was going to stay. So then the process runs itself. You know, we enter the one day games, he's playing for the Cobras, and, you know, we start putting together the, the winter program, the contract uh, players. And so we, we identified, I think, about 32 players that I, I, I met with. Either, you know, I met 90% of them one on one. And then Corona, I think there was like, let's say, 10% I did over over, over, over video call. Um, with the ladies, we, we identified the contracted number as well. And, and I've, I've had one-on-ones with all of them. Um, but, yeah, during that process, we found out that, that Dane had now decided to go and uh, sign a call pack, uh, which is disappointing. I mean, I, I think we obviously want to keep our depth. Um, you know, he's probably not in your frontline seam attack, but your depth is hugely important. And, you know, the strength of domestic cricket is hugely important. That's what you're touching on. You know, when it comes to someone like Dane Pitts, I mean, I, you know, and Fehan Biardin and, and the guys, you know, even Vernon, Vernon to a degree, the guys have given an immense amount to, to South African cricket and they're kind of at the back end of their careers. And, and, and in a way, you know, they've been great servants of the game uh, in South African cricket. So those guys you know, signing a year or two at the back end of their careers, you know, for an opportunity to earn a bit more and go and play a bit more cricket and maximise their, you know, their last, their last two raw, if you want. I don't have a problem with that. It's, it's when we're losing players that are you know, in the mix, that are in the pipeline. Oh. Someone flying over you or what? Someone, someone flying over. I, I think I <laughs> might need to have, go and have a shower now. <laughs> uh, so, so let, me, let me get back to the point the point is that we don't want to be losing people that are, are in our pipeline in our mix that we're looking to you know progress to play for the pro tiers um, um, and then you know so those are the worries and I, I think with Brexit coming to an end there needs to be an engagement to see where players sit we obviously want them back in our system we want to have the best players playing domestic cricket available for selection for the pro tiers um, you know, in, having engaged with a few free agents, uh, you know, they certainly still want to represent South Africa. Um, so, you know, building to the 2020 World Cup, we wanted to create the opportunities uh, mm. for people to... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. So, all, un- all understandable. Let him, right. her, he have her Bob, rant. Let me, let me, let me just show you. Let me, let me yeah, let me the yeah, the problem is what he's wearing. You know, what he's saying is fine. You know what? 
the airplane is noisy, yes. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Pom, I mean, I think those are the, I guess those are the challenges. And, and you know, how we integrate players back now is going to be key. You know, there's, there's, I think Cricket South Africa has more committees than a listed company. So we've got to engage some of these, these committees and, um, you know, uh, put forward the plans going, going forward. But I, I certainly... I think Cricket South Africa needs a much more open-minded approach to IPLs, uh, these, these other opportunities. We, we, we don't pay people what you know, other nations are paying, the top nations are paying. So we've got to find other ways to expose them, give them opportunities to earn, to grow their skills, but still be available for, for selection for, for our national teams and our domestic teams. I'm trying to read between the lines there, okay? Is that a statement to say you are open to that sort of thing and you will try and reintegrate some players. I, I'm not, not so much uninterested to know, just want to know about, uh, with regard to names, I just want to know about process. So you will try to get those who, let's say, Colpac contracts are done, maybe still in Colpac contracts, but you think can benefit your system. And number three, free agents who are not on Colpac contracts and are just kind of um, hanging about trying to earn as much but could benefit South African cricket. Look, Pom, I mean, as a mindset, you know, we want all our, our best players back uh, and playing. I mean, contracting has already happened for the next period. I mean, we're looking at restructuring. I mean... The domestic season in England, no one knows what's going to happen now with, with Corona. Um, it looks like it's getting, a lot of it's going to be put on hold. Um, and as we move forward to the summer, I guess a lot of players that are on Colpac agreements, whether it's two, four, five years, whatever, need to relook those things, whether they become overseas players there, which allows them to become available for South Africa again, which allows them to come back into our system. Uh, and, and we need to, I guess, over this next few months, um, you know, with the cricket committee and the members' councils and, you know, find a structure of how we integrate players back in. I mean, my, 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 my thought is that definitely, you know, if your best players are available for selection both domestically and internationally, you know, that's, 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 what, that's what we want. Huh. Um, but they need to be committed and they need to, you know, know, you know what's required and they need to be up to standard and, you know, no one's getting a free pass. You know, uh, you know, so even if you have got the ability and we know what you're capable of, you know, these things have to be performance-based as well. Mm, yeah, and process and system-based, I guess. Okay, um, final thing. The captaincy, you, you're on record as saying it's not going to be the test captaincy. It's not going to be Quinton de Kock. You have installed him as a... Um, one day captain and 2020 captain, am I right? And, and so tell me what your thinking is then with regard to him not being the test captain and what, who you're looking towards, you know, what's, what's the chatter? You know, Palmer, it'd probably be the easy decision to make just to make Quinton three formats, you know. In particular, we don't have an extensive amount of test matches over the next period in our FTP. You know, it's a small amount of uh, games, handful. Um, but we just feel that the right decision going forward is to, to not burden him with three. Having done it myself, I know three formats, playing all the time, leading all the time, driving the environment all the time. You know, certainly can can take its toll, and we don't want to do that with Quinton. We want to keep him fresh. Uh, you know, he, he's, he keeps he opens the batting. He, he's he's, one, he's our, probably our, been our top player of late as well. So he's already carrying a huge burden, and, and we've also got to grow him as as a person as well. So we need to give him some time uh, as well to to develop. Um, so you know, when when you start looking at the other options, there's a, there's a few players that I guess are on a similar level. There's no one that really you know stands out. So. You know, you, your strategy might be that you, you, you're looking at someone, you're giving someone an opportunity to take it forward, you know, and, and give them a chance. Um, you know, having been a young man and got given that opportunity, I know it's not going to be easy for the person that, that we give it to. Um, and we've got to support them. But I, I think that's kind of where we are at the moment, um, you know, just to give someone a, a, an opportunity to take it forward. Who's that? Who's that in the background? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, look, I'd like to know if you guys spoke to Quinton and if he turned the job down or 
if he gave his input with regard to the test captaincy? Um, Mark in particular has had some extensive discussions with him uh, over the period of time. Um, I've had a number of discussions with him in terms of the jobs. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I think he, he was in that place as well. He, he understood uh, where we were uh, and what was going on. Sorry, I'm phone is about to... Let me move. Let me move. Can we, can we move together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can move. Yeah, we're allowed to move. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're allowed to. Move. Um, we're allowed to. Uh, let me move inside. Um, so, yeah, we had, we had, had discussions. Um, and I guess he was, uh, he was understanding. And, and I think he was very comfortable with the decision being made uh, as well. Um, and I, and a hundred percent with it. I, I think he knew that it was going to be a big, a big task. Uh, okay. Um, do you mind terribly, uh, us going through some names? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, I suppose my, my question first would be what kind of captain do you think the South African test match team requires now considering that, um, it's not a case of, you know, pick one right now. You, you've got the time to think about it. Number one, think what kind of team you've got. And number two, think then what would be best with regard to um, how you go for it. I, I don't want to pick names, but I, I think like a couple of things is that, you know, you need to see how the environment respects them as well as, as a leader. Um, you know, how they connect with players, how, how, how they operate over a period of time. I mean... You know, there's a number of players also that haven't played an extensive amount of games, but, you know, I guess have the respect of, of the team. You know, then you take the tactical uh, side of things on the field. You know, we've, we've got a, a decent uh, management group now that I, I think can support a young captain. I think our test side's going to have a, an element of rebuilding to it, you know. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I think that sort of uh, leadership criteria, a personality that can that can handle the stresses and the pressures, uh, and perform with the bat, uh, I guess, is 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 one of the most important things because we know the captaincy can can take its strain. You know why my eyes are going up like that? Because I haven't I haven't said a bowler. <laughs> well, no, because you've given me a clue. <laughs> not not that it surprises. Yeah, I do think. Personally, I, mean, I do think captaining and bowling is particularly difficult. I don't think you'd need the stresses of, um, I don't think you need the stresses of, uh, of captaincy and strategy when you have I'm sure, to I mean, I mean, having, I'm sure many bowlers would like to attempt to put up their hands, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't think we're right there right now. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it kind of it depends, doesn't it? And you know, there are guys who can do it. There are guys whose temperament is okay and and who would be able to manage both things. And when I say both things, it's probably quite, I'm taking a small sample size because it isn't both things at all. It's strategy and, and, and the team and bowling, but management of it and then off field and, and, and there's a whole lot that kind of goes with it, which, which might make it difficult. As a young captain yourself, what was the most difficult? If you were to, you, and you will sort of pick through the things that happened to you, um, for a guy who you might install as a captain to give the job and say, look, take it. What are the good he, things? He, he, he can be daunted by it, but I mean, he must want it, Pom. I mean, it's, uh. you, you can't give it to somebody that's, I guess, uncertain. You know, it's a, it's a commitment thing. You've got to commit to, you've got to, commit to doing it. Um, uh -huh. And then, and then uh, you know, I, I guess where I got lucky is I was able to perform. Uh, and then, you know, the powers that be, you know, supported me through that process. They backed me, they helped grow me. You know, even though things were challenging, you know, uh, they gave me the support that I, that I needed. I think having a really good management team around is, is going to be key. You know, they can take some of the load and the pressure off, off a young guy. But then it's also allowing that person to, to make a few mistakes, to develop as a, as, as a leader, um, to, to develop his style as well. Um, and, and you need to give them a little bit of an opportunity and a little bit of a run, I guess, to make a success of it. And then, you know, keep assessing, you know, keep, keep having feedback sessions, keep, keep talking, you know, understanding how the team feels. And that's why I think, you know, understanding the type of person that would, you know, the team would, would get behind, you know, would, mm. uh, you know, say, okay, look, I know he's going to make a few mistakes, but I'm behind him and uh, I'm going to play for him is, is, is a big element of it, you know. Mm.
Mm, okay. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a, an interesting time. It's an uncertain time. We don't know how long this will go. Lockdown, number one, number two. Just the whole world is in lockdown, isn't it? And we don't know when this um, sporting landscape, it puts things into perspective, doesn't it? The, the importance or uh, lack of in terms of sport and life and health and, and mm. all the rest. So, you know, we're way down the pecking order. You're right. I mean, we're way down the pecking order, but it's scary as well. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, you know sport is a huge part of our lives uh, and a business for us. And, you know, it's, uh, you've got to rethink things. I mean, you know, you can't imagine six months, eight months without any, you know, live sport or cricket, you know. Uh, it, the whole world will be turned upside down, you know, financially. Um, you know, if we start getting to our season and there's nothing happening, you know, the stresses are going to be huge. I mean, uh -huh. think about the, the broadcasters, super sports, like, like, you know. You know, the business is based on live sports. So, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a lot of pain around, you know, the, the stakeholders that we have in our game, you know, the corporates that back uh, and sponsor, you know, the, them suffering doesn't help. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world out there. I, I guess everyone can point to someone that's worse off, you know, no food on their table, no, you know, roof over their head. I, I get it. But in our little world, it's, it's, it's scary in itself, you know, so I can only mm. imagine other people. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And when it is on, sport allows people psychologically anyway. Um, for those who don't quite get into it so much and get engrossed. And, and my children. biggest and, worry is that Liverpool's and, not going to win the league, Bob. Come on. I was going to say. And, and, and for those who don't put their kids in Liverpool kit and all of that, you know, they're able to take mental breaks from the hardships of life and the difficulties of I don't know, business life, work life, family life, and so forth. So, yeah, it indeed is a difficult time. Final thing. I know I said final thing before. This has nothing to do with, with work and, and everything. How are you keeping yourself busy? And is your whole family healthy and happy at home? Yeah, Pom, I mean, we're we blessed. I mean, we've got food in the fridge and, you know, a roof over our head. And, I mean, but we still have our challenges, I guess, you know, we're having to work remotely. I mean, I've seen many great pictures and, and things about working at home and, and, and now the elements of teaching as well has come in. Um, you know, we've got five kids in the house. Uh, you know, luckily our three-year-old is, is not, uh, you know, too hectic, but the older ones, nine to one on, on online teaching. I'm handling the two younger ones, uh, you know, the grade one and grade two, uh teaching of that uh, and trying to work so it's been there's been a few moments uh and a few hair raising moments but uh, you know you just you just track on you just try and find a way you know i think you know you adapt uh, you try and focus on some routines in the house to try and get the kids working i mean it's a whole new world and uh, it's, uh we just take it each day as it comes and, and try and do the best that we can okay well I hope that you're all okay. I hope you remain okay. And <laughs> we can only pray that um, this lockdown and the virus itself... How are you, Pump? Is How's your family? Hold. Hey, we're good. We're, as you say, we're blessed. We only look at good things, you know. Confront brutal truths, yes. But hold on to the fact that we'll be okay in the end, God yeah. willing. So, yeah, we're fine. We're all okay. Thanks. Thanks for I mean, we should have been running around the RPL in 45 degrees. Oh, so. yeah, okay, true. <laughs> well, we should have been. We should have been. But, hey, maybe another time. Maybe next year. Whenever. <laughs> whenever everything is lifted. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, yeah, thanks, thanks for chatting, Smitty. Good to catch up. Cool. And, and you stay well. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Bye.